um, and most of you are aware, I hope most of you know anyway, um, Tyler Creator released a deluxe version of his album, Call Me If You Get Lost, and he titled it The Estate Sale. So it's a little bit of a different sort of flip on, um, it's not a different flip really, it's the same sort of flip, but he kind of presents it in a different sort of way. But if I'm not mistaken, I think he might have done like three or four music videos for this, which you don't usually get from people who do deluxe albums. Usually deluxe albums are like an opportunity to like throw out some bonus tracks, or maybe tracks you've been maybe featuring on your Instagram stories, and you didn't put them on the album, the anticipation builds, and then you put them out for your fans later on, but they're kind of throwaways. But he's actually putting a lot of effort into this bonus, and he went out and filmed actual videos for these tracks which is really weird so it makes me think that a lot of these tracks that were added to call me if you get lost the estate sale may have been actual tracks that were done that you just couldn't fit into call me if you get lost stylistically which says a lot about tyler the creator as an artist that he was not willing to put tracks that i feel are bangers and are definitely going to go down in his discography as some of his best records on his album because it doesn't stylistically fit with the overall theme of it because a lot of these artists nowadays don't have any theme there's no sort of style style kind of you know tying the tracks together of an album it's just a selection of the best 10 plus songs that they've done in a year or two year period where I feel like Tyler is definitely somebody that's sitting down and crafting an entire project and making sure that it's somehow cohesive and you have to kind of give the guy credit for it I also like the fact that when you put out the bonus track he didn't do what some people do which is annoying where they'll reorder the, the order of the album and slip the bonus tracks in and between them so that you listen to the whole thing and I also like the fact that he put them all at the end because that's how bonus albums were back in the day if you bought a bonus album so a deluxe album all the bonus tracks will be at the end onwards or there'll be a second cd so from safari which is i think the last track on the actual call me if you get lost all of these tracks from 17 down to 24 are the bonus records so it's that eight isn't it it's that eight, yeah eight records are the new ones over there so they're all done in that kind of way but i think just personally for me personally i'd much prefer it if we got to a point where deluxe albums weren't a thing and artists just put out the bonus records and put them out just as single year you know a, a kind of an eight track ep because i feel like this sort of like trend of re-releasing the album with the other tracks on there it's just an easy way to kind of game the streaming numbers and it's not really a nice listening experience for the fan because you have to kind of figure out what the bonus tracks are it's not really clearly labeled it doesn't tell you when you download the album off of apple itunes it doesn't say hey these tracks are the bonus it just lists it as it is so you have to kind of go to the track list and check it out and see where it is it's at the top it's at the bottom have they mixed it in but you know um tyler did make it easy for everybody by kind of adding it at the end so give him credit for that one the tracks that i really like out of this one number one kind of mention is boyfriend um girlfriend which is allegedly it's a 2020 demo which is absolutely insane featuring yg um i'm not the biggest yg fan um drake of the ruler you know r.i.p drake of the ruler we know the truth um just in general anyway drake of the ruler beef aside i've not never really been the biggest yg fan ever but i feel like tyler as per usual is really really good at pulling these features out of the out of his ass essentially and basically presenting an artist that you maybe didn't like that much in a different way and making them sound amazing i think he did the same thing with nba young boy he did the same thing here with yg in his track i think this track is an absolute bop if anything this track reminds me a tiny 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 bit i'm not sure some of you guys know but there's a song on um what's it called snoop dogg's album with the trees i think it's called bush i think actually maybe the one that pharrell maybe produced it came out a few years ago suit dog's got this album that's kind of like a disco-y type of funk type of thing and i think it's track eight or nine or something from that album it's um i think it's called like runaway or something like that with um with gwen stefani i feel like that track sounds a lot like boyfriend girlfriend it's got that similar sort of like you know disky disco indie dance type of bop to it which is really really cool i think every artist has one of those kind of um you know bops in their kind of catalog that they kind of put out that probably do well in streaming and probably just are a good little you know adage that they can add to their discography but i feel like that's definitely a standout for me and i definitely 100 percent enjoyed it and then the other track that i really like was what a day what a day was legitimately amazing 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 track i think i've got it here um allegedly produced by madlib and wow 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 
the last kind of section here towards the end lyrics wise like the entire thing is a really clever sort of like flip on flexing i think there's a good little bit here on verse two where essentially it's tyler saying the stuff that he doesn't do which is a really cool way of saying the stuff that he does do which kind of separates him from everybody i really really do enjoy it it kind of starts out on verse two saying look i don't fuck with parties i don't fuck with paparazzi never have drove a hellcat or a maserati never needed others for my personal validation she ain't getting touched if she cannot hold a conversation never had a bulky richard millie as a wristwatch i've never seen a mary never posted on tiktok never had desires to promethazine and soda never had eye contact with a woman in fashion over never had a fit in no lane never wore beats by dre headphones to get a video made uh bunny hop validated peddling um hitting wheelies like chris Rettling, just look around every opportunity allocated i put so many niggas on you for our dj khalid made it from cold showers i used to hate it now i'm spending 15 for the new roof it ain't renovated i could see the ocean where i sleep and the house is gated no calabasas i brentwood it or palisade it the freckled girls articulate art got me salivating i love it wall is henry taylor with the trunks i be playing jenga the last tour dog i cleaned house they mad i made it i'm so conceited feeling myself ego masturbated i graduated after album five i got syndicated you want the old t sorry g that picture faded come get it with me like goated one of the best verses he's done in a while and i just love the play of being able to kind of flex by actually not flexing by just mentioning all the stuff that you don't do like this is legitimately a really cool little piece here and um amazing and kind of just motivating in general if you want to just listen to it i think that's one thing you kind of always get from tyler the creator records is really cool motivational talk that isn't i don't think condescending and kind of feel like comes from a core place and definitely comes from a place where a lot of people can sort of relate to by being kind of overlooked and kind of you know dismissed and now you're suddenly in this position where you're kind of calling the shots but i do like he's uh, he's in a space where he's also willing to maybe remind people of just how awesome he basically is right his achievements and what he's been able to do without being maybe praised for it and maybe being acknowledged as other people would be acknowledged because he kind of operates in this sort of weird space where he doesn't really get claimed super hard by hip-hop people he doesn't really get super claimed i don't feel like by the whites on pitchfork and shit he just kind of exists in his own little you know space which i think is pretty cool personally but it must be a bit of a mind fuck for him as an artist because he probably doesn't feel like he just gets the accolades that he probably should deserve um considering how kind of influential and amazing he is but there's a really cool part i think is really interesting here which kind of shows maybe the evolution the kind of you know the space where tyler is as an adult where he says this on verse three yeah i'm a dead poet tabletop and stomping i'm a free spirit i have a whole jail jumping ever since a youngin i moved at my pace scared of having youngins because i like my space selfish ain't the word regret ain't either before you get huffing and puffing take a breather put yourself first if you're living with a dream be your biggest cheerleader motherfuck the team really interesting huh track so it's basically him basically saying how he's in this position where now he's thinking do i really want kids do i really want to start a family or am i just in a space where it's just not for me and i like how basically in this verse especially in the few opening lines especially here he basically says it's not that he's selfish it's just a choice because i think now at the moment a lot of people you know the conversations around people don't have, want to have kids is that they're being selfish and not really thinking about the greater good and not thinking about you know um adding to their life adding to their you know timeline contributing to society blah 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 when really maybe it's just not for everybody as much as it kind of you know has become a bit of a trend nowadays to start families with randoms maybe for some people it just doesn't necessarily resonate or click and it probably is better off to when you recognize that early on in life then it is just to kind of try it for the sake of it and then realize it's not for you and now you're responsible for a whole human it can be very very sketchy in that regard especially if it's just not something that you can kind of want or it's kind of it's calling for you and then i really do like this bit here at the end because it's going to put me onto the last section i want to talk about tyler where he says put yourself first when you're living with your dream be your biggest cheerleader motherfuck the team right and i feel like maybe again i'm not really seeing it too much but i listen to quite a bit of music like from different sort of genres and i literally don't think i've seen somebody promote themselves as hard as tyler does when you consider how popular he is 
I don't think there's anybody else in any genre who really promotes himself. I look, 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 look at this. Look at the image here. Look at his media on his Twitter. He's got six pictures of screenshots from his own album that he's sharing. I know people do it. People maybe drop an album. They may do some press, some radio interviews, share those clips and stuff. Um, and that's about it. And maybe share a link or two. But people are really shy and maybe reserved about sharing or promoting their art too much, which I've never really understood. And I think we've all kind of had that issue. I think if you're a creative um, doing your thing, it can be difficult. Even if you've got a SoundCloud mix that's got two listens on it uh, or you want to share a bit of art on your stories, it can be just hard and cringy and embarrassing to kind of post that sort of stuff online. But really and truly, if you're not your biggest cheerleader, as Tyler the Creator says, who's really going to advocate for you? Who's really going to be, you know, flexing and stunting for you online if you're not going to stand for yourself so Tyler does a really awesome job of promoting and pushing what he does constantly like you look at his Twitter um, feed now which I think is the best place to kind of see all this um, him posting a screenshot of the of the Sorry Not Sorry track it is what it is again Sorry Not Sorry is another really great track another one him not posting it out um, little, I guess little tidbits in terms of his inspiration or what he's thinking behind a track. For the track Boyfriend Girlfriend that I said featuring YG, which is one of my favorites, it says, as a kid in LA at my mama's friend's house, um, corrupt or quick will be playing dominoes being slammed, plants in the air, running in and out of the house. These sounds are like that environment. YG fits so well, couldn't figure the bridge out, so I kept it off the original album. Um, another track here. This is for Dogtooth. Um, that who that boy vocal twang. I love it. Ace Creator 07 asked piano. Just statement after statement. Got a bounce to it. I haven't fully leaned into it. Love this one. Sunny but airy. If that makes any sense. Um, and then for the other track here, Heaven to Me, which is absolutely beautiful to me. I think that's the one that. Um, Kanye may be produced it's a John Legend once again a album is special to me this Kanye beat still leaves me speechless I had to such a warm sound another hand held one mic take uh, beat felt like it um, highlight reel of my life so I lean into it okay cool so this was recorded the same way that he recorded Wiltshire which is one of my favorite tracks off of Call Me If You Get Lost. Wiltshire is, uh, definitely resonates with me. I've identified a lot of the stuff that's being spoken about on that track. That definitely was one that touched me when it first came out. Another one here is Wolf Talk with um, Rocky. Um, his tippet here says, my favorite, absolute favorite. I love rock over this type of shit. R&B grooves is my DNA. The go, go, go. Um, at the end, I thought I was Coco over the B Morgan track, huh? Another one here, what a day, would skate home to this Mad Lib beat as a teen. It's so feral. Um, this is like my best raps. This and Dog Tiff is the best representation of my brain right now. Love it. Vince and, I've, Vince and I first song. I couldn't figure out the hook of this one. Saved my life. Gold slug, white tank top, two rag music. Yep, I really do love that one as well. And him obviously highlighting 10 years, you know, of his other album but yeah promoting and you know a music video dog tooth promoting music video for wolf talk um sharing clips and stuff and this is another thing that he does i think tyler does really well where he kind of not to sound like you know pretentious but he sort of educates his fans on how to behave as fans of his so he wants fans of his to be um creative he wants fans of his to be to kind of be fearless to go for their things he wants them also to be like very um engaged with music in general to kind of talk about the things that they like in a song sections lyrics uh parts of beat breakdowns bridges um themes or whatever things they pulled from me like he loves tyler that's also so obviously he asked people to kind of point out bits and he's retweeting it and kind of commenting on it a person here says the braggadocious first verse on what a day is elite fam um another one here says uh before i go 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 before i go definitely a great part so he's definitely done a good thing of like educating his fans on sort of how to kind of engage with him on the music that he makes and i think that's a really smart thing that he kind of has done over the years that's obviously lent him to probably having i think a pretty good I think all round fan base in general, if you think about it, like he's got a pretty decent one in terms of how they basically interact with him and whatnot um, and what they kind of stand for and don't stand for. Like I even look at, I think at the bit when he was talking about Wiltshire, that girl he basically took from his best friend at the time. Um, a lot of fans kind of found out who she was at the end and you know, I think she popped out anyway, but she wasn't that well known beforehand. And a lot of the fans I remember seeing on Reddit were kind of defending him and saying, hey, don't post the details on there and stuff and really kind of, you know, honoring his kind of, um, insistence on being private with some parts of his life and I think that comes from 
this ability to kind of engage with his fans the way he does and kind of teach them good behavior which is again really dumb thing to say and it kind of makes his fans sound like dogs i understand that but i feel like he does a really good job in doing this because you know the fans listen to the music i feel like these are some of the fans who actually listen to the album from top to bottom they clearly screenshot bits that they like in terms of lyrics um i, I like this as well um someone says here when you spoke on how you feel about having kids this is always my thought process but now i have a son on the way i can't lie i'm so scared and now my space is gone but it's cool because what i spoke about in heaven to me lifts my spirits up when i think about life at 40 and he says yeah i'm thinking i'm down just to be a rich uncle tyler cross says having kids is not the end or and be off everyone but who knows so i'd love all the stuff he's in gedry's fan so yeah the promo run's been amazing again if Tyler can do this, this is definitely a sign for me myself to not be as kind of, you know, up my own ass and shy about doing my own thing as well and promoting the stuff that I do because even I find it difficult to do so, especially when you're flexing like this, right? Um, he's got a quote here. It says, um, somebody quoted and said on Twitter, when you said I got a jelly bean Kelly green um, Roy's and the guts off white like a jell jell jalapeno, he says, you hey, I ain't going to lie. And Tyler says, it's facts, true story. And he posts a picture of his own jelly bean Rolls Royce um, in a garage somewhere in some place that's really snowy. Maybe it's another a house that he has somewhere in a foreign country. But this is absolutely incredible. Like, So yeah, big up Tyler. Definitely inspiring. The album's absolutely amazing. I love everything about it. Um, bonus tracks are banging. Um, obviously, highlight for me um, definitely has to be What A Day. Definitely has to be Boyfriend, Girlfriend. Um, sorry Not Sorry is a bit of a bop. The Stuntman track with Vince Staples above all of them are sick heaven to me obviously the flipping um, Kanye beat is absolutely amazing it's all flipping slaps so yeah big up Tyler the Creator I love everything about it it's really really good album check it out if you haven't already please do check it out if you haven't already it's definitely one of the great ones out there at the moment <laughs> 